What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dread Labs and today I'm going to show you how to create plastic textures like these in Adobe Photoshop. Dread Labs. All right, before we get started, I know this has been a trend uh, for quite a while now and I actually never did a video on it. So I thought, let's just show you guys how this works. So the things that you will need is, of course, plastic textures. Uh, in my case, I have plastic baggies that came with some order that I did online. Basically, if you order anything online, most of the times there's plastic in there. So for example, if you want to have a vinyl texture with like the shrink wrapping around it, you should probably order like a black blank vinyl cover. So the next thing that you need is black paper. So this can be anything that's uh, dark enough and flat enough to be inside a scanner. So maybe black fabric would work as well. So yeah, I highly suggest that you just see what's lying around your house and experiment with it. And then you need a scanner or maybe like a camera if you want to replace that. But yeah, I am going to use a scanner for this one. So now that you have everything that you need, let's get started and turn this like plastic waste into something productive. All right, so scan in mine at 1200 DPI. I think most scanners actually have that option. Uh, so I'm going to show you real quick how this works. Uh, on a MacBook. All right, so in this image capture software, this comes with a MacBook. I'm not sure which program you should use in on Windows, but obviously there is, there's always a way, a way to use your scanner. In this software, there's always like an option for resolution and you should always go for the highest quality possible because this will leave you with more detail once you actually put this into Photoshop and start working with it. So as you can see, I already scanned in mine. These are the bags and let's just drag them into Photoshop and see how to edit these into transparent plastic bags. All right, so we're into Photoshop and as you can see, it's quite a light little like scan that we did here because uh, this is like an old scanner, nothing special. But yeah, I just wanted to guys, you guys to show that it's actually possible without like an expensive scanner. So the first thing we're gonna do is add a curve layer here and if we drag this down, you'll see that there's detail like already disappearing. But we actually need the background to like be as dark as possible. And we probably should also desaturate this because it's turning like really, really blue now. And I think around minus 64 is fine for now. Let's see. So you want to preserve some of the detail, like the highlights, but if you actually preserve everything that's here, like this, if you put this over an artwork, you probably won't see a lot of it. So let's go with something like this, I guess. I think this should be fine. Maybe a little less saturation like this. All right, now if we press Command, Option, Shift and E on a MacBook or Control, Alt, Shift, E on Windows, you'll actually be left with everything in one layer. If we make the rest invisible, uh, there's an easy way to just remove all of the black parts in this uh, visual, like you can, as you can see here. So if we just do it like this, play around with it for a while. Now if we make a layer underneath here black, so I think I want to give a little bit more highlights here, something like this. Let's see what happens if we put another color underneath here. Yeah, okay. Um, you see these like shadow spots? Basically play around with this. If you have like a really bright artwork that you want to put into this plastic sleeve here, I would suggest removing more darker colors of these highlights uh, like this. But if we work with a black background, you might want to like tone it down a little bit. Like this. Uh, this is basically all you need to know. For now, I'm going to just cut these out and show you a way to warp these if you want to work with, for example, square artworks, because these are, as you can see, rectangular. Let's go with this one because I like the edge of this. Also, guys, don't forget, if you're not satisfied with the wrinkling of this plastic, you can always just rescan it, make a couple uh, versions and see which one works best for you. I'm going to make a selection and duplicate this into a separate layer so we can turn everything off. And now if we convert it into a smart object, we're actually left with a separate bag. So I'm just gonna drag in a quick artwork that I did in another tutorial. Uh, you can check it out up here. And I'm gonna show you a way to wrap the plastic around this artwork. All right, so this is an artwork that I did in a previous video in which I redesigned a design from one of my subscribers. Uh, if you're interested in having your design redesigned by me, feel free to join us on Discord and send me a message there. Put it to the back here. Let's make sure that we have aligned it correctly. Like so. All right, so we're going to go to Edit, Perspective Warp. And we're left with this like little tool and you want to draw a rectangle around this first part of the bag. And then you want to draw another rectangle around like the closure. 
and these should connect like this and just make sure that they're actually in the middle of the line here and now we're just going to click on the warp panel on the top left here and you'll see that we can easily drag these points out right and because we use this smart object this is editable later so if you want to make any adjustments you can just click on the perspective warp here and you can redo it if you want to and now that i see it i maybe want to reduce some of these shadows here so i'm just going to go double click on my layer again and modify these blend if settings and something like this is fine for me now and let's just make this artwork a little bit smaller all right so we have successfully used a plastic texture that we scanned in ourselves and used it in one of our artworks so I really do encourage you to look around your house, see if you have any like plastic waste laying around and see if you can create something with it. So that's it for the video guys. Thank you so much for watching. I just want to take a moment to thank my patrons. Because of my patrons, I'm actually able to create these videos for you guys. Uh, they make me be able to create more content for you guys, not only on YouTube, but also on Instagram uh, and also to create more products for you guys. So if you don't really know, if you become a patron of mine, you'll get access to all of the project files from my tutorials, including this one, as well as a 15% discount in the Dreadlabs web store. And if you join us on Discord, you'll get a Dreadlabs Insider Discord role. So if you want to become a patron, there's a link in the description. If you still have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or you can join us on Discord and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.